is the art of asking good questions. I actually used to keep a journal. I would, when I would stumble across a question, I thought, this is a question I want to keep. Like, for example, you know how young people are always asked, what are you going to do when you get older? And I remember I was 28 years old and I, somebody asked me, what kind of person do you want to become? I thought, that is an amazing question. And so at, at, I, will lit, I will find questions like that that helps me ask young people, what kind of person do you want to become? Or, or finding ways to unlock who they are. Now, some of us are not great at that. And there are question cards <laughs> that I've used in youth groups that I use when I'm in a car or if I'm having a meal with kids, I'll throw the cards out and you'll have different questions that will uh, awaken different parts of young people. And then I'm listening, paying attention to what's there. 60% um, of the interactions that Jesus has in the New Testament, he listens first. And so more importantly than thinking about the words that we want to tell kids or the teachings we want to give or the doctrines we want to teach is I'm trying to figure out as a youth minister, what are the settings and spaces where these kids start talking? And then what allows me to, to mirror it back so they can hear uh, the, the deeper parts of who they are so they can move down beneath the images and identities that the culture gives them. And I can start to, to, to reflect back to them that uh, their unique beauty in the image of God, their, their belovedness. And I'm, so, so, so each day I'm trying to be curious when I'm among young people for where that's showing up. And when it's there, I shine a light on it. So my wife worked in a, in a home with, with <clears throat> abused children. These were children who were removed from their families. Some of these children moved, lived on the streets. So it, was, it was a home for boys. And these boys were <clears throat> seven to about 12 years old. And they were so used to being reflected back to them that they were monsters, that, that, um, that they were unlovable, that in this home, they would act out, right? So they would destroy things. They would hurt themselves. They would hurt others. This, this was how they knew themselves. But my wife said every once in a while, a kid, their deeper self would show up. You know, uh, some they'd be sitting around the table, and some kid would show up late and say, "Everybody ate all the macaroni and cheese." And one kid would go, "Here, you can have some of mine." Or, or she'd ask somebody, "Hey, could someone turn off the lights?" And instead of somebody uh, tackling someone else, they'd say, "Sure, I can do it," and they'd go over and turn off the lights. And she said, as soon as I saw this, the, their, their sort of deeper self, I would pounce. She said, "I would just shine a light." Tom, thank you so much for turning off the light. I really appreciate that. Or, 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 or David, you know, it's so nice of you to share that macaroni and cheese. You're a generous kid. You're really generous. That's really, I mean, I would have kept it all. And you're trying to listen and hear that deeper self and holding that identity and then re reflect it back. 